that there is no gold uh, bull market like a Chinese gold bull market. They are speculators at heart and they will chase price. So there's another, you know, there's another can of gasoline. Um, India has been a huge importer. That's another can of gasoline. Then add to that in the West, we're going to have banking problems. We're, we're starting to have uh, rumblings again in the repo market. I mean, you're talking about literally trillions of dollars that are going to move into gold and silver, but the, the price is going to explode and it will be it it will be a uh, real raw buying, but the the real fun is going to be watching the shorts get squeezed. You could wake up, uh, you know, we'll go through a, a period of time where you see silver move a dollar, two dollars a day, and then you're going to see five and ten dollar moves. Then all of a sudden you're going to start seeing fifty and hundred dollar moves. And I'm talking about silver now, I'm not talking about gold. And I think you're going to start seeing two hundred uh 200 dollar day moves in gold silver price forecast bears have the upper hand ascending channel breakdown in play silver trades with negative bias for the second straight day though lacks follow through selling a fall below the 50 day sma validates an ascending channel breakdown and favors bearish traders any meaningful recovery attempt might now be seen as a selling opportunity and remain limited. Silver remains on the back foot through the first half of the European session on Thursday, albeit manages to hold above the $31 mark. The technical setup, however, seems tilted in favor of bearish traders and suggests that the path of least resistance for the white metal remains to the downside. The overnight downfall and a subsequent weakness below the 50-day simple moving average confirmed a short-term ascending trend channel breakdown. Furthermore, oscillators on the daily chart have been gaining negative traction and add credence to the near-term negative outlook. Any further decline, however, is likely to find decent support near the 100-day SMA, currently pegged near the $30.40 to $30.35 region. On the flip side, the 50-day SMA support breakpoint around the $31.35 area now seems to act as an immediate hurdle. A sustained strength beyond could trigger a short covering rally towards the $31 and 75 cents intermediate resistance. The $32 round figure and the $32 and 25 cents to $30 and 30 cents supply zone. Any further move up is more likely to attract fresh sellers and remain capped near the ascending channel support breakpoint around the $32.75 region. Now we'll show you more clips, but first subscribe and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. Enjoy the episode. Uh, that situation ex exists again today. There were many multiples of paper contracts that had been sold short that had previously suppressed the price and those needed to be covered. Um, I forget who it was. And I think it was, uh, it might've been Bank America. It might've been JP Morgan. I forget who it was that was really short. Um, after the, uh, I, I actually think it was JP Morgan because they absorbed, they absorbed Bear Stearns. And uh, I think Lehman was also short, but Bear Stearns was the big silver short. So those had to be covered, and that was basically a short covering operation. You have that same thing today. I believe Bank America is is the big short. And uh, but this is way bigger than back then. I mean, to see it move to fifty dollars, and and that would be it. That would be. I'd be shocked if that were to happen. We've got. From what I understand, there's 406 paper ounces now uh, for every one real ounce that exists. So there's there's gasoline for the for the short squeeze fire. You also have, isn't it interesting that Saudi Arabia did not, from what I understand, they did not attend the BRICS meeting. And I think the reason being they're sitting on what, 600 or 800 billion dollars worth of treasuries, and they don't want to see the same thing happen to their treasuries that happened to uh, the Russian treasuries, the 300 plus billion that 
or sequestered, stolen, whatever you want to call it. That's $800 billion that could move into metal. Um, I just posted an article uh, yesterday or the day before showing the amount of uh, the volume on the Shanghai exchange. The volume has just exploded in the last month or two. And I, I, if you're not familiar with the uh, with the thought process of the Chinese, I'll just say that there is no gold uh, bull market like a Chinese gold bull market. They are speculators at heart, and they will chase price. So there's another, you know, there's another can of gasoline. Um, India has been a huge importer. That's another can of gasoline, and then after that in the west we're going to have banking problems we're we're starting to have uh rumblings again in the repo market i mean you're talking about literally trillions of dollars that are going to move into gold and silver and that's like trying to put uh niagara falls through a garden hose you can't do it um but the the price is going to explode and it will be it it will be a uh, real raw buying but the the real fun is going to be watching the shorts get squeezed yeah well that's huge i mean that's a that's a hey when you use the term marginal buyer it's a buyer on the margin but russia by no means is a marginal buyer i mean you know they could step up and easily put you know 50 100 million dollars a month and in the very first month there'd be a failure to deliver and all uh and all available gold and silver for sale today would not be for sale tomorrow. That would all go into hiding. So, yeah, that's another that's that's another huge buyer. And I just want to say that, you know, they, there is this concentrated short position in silver, and that's been used to manage the price. But it's you have to be absolutely insane or suicidal to want to short silver at these levels. We've broken over the 3250 level. Um, there's really nothing technically between here and 50. 50 breaks, and then it's, it's, there is no technical area to stop it. And it's a crowded trade. I mean, it is a concentrated short that at some point in time has got to be covered. Do they really believe they're going to be able to cover it at 25 or 20 or 15? No, they're going to be forced to cover. And it could be, you could wake up, uh, you know, we'll go through a, a period of time where you see silver move a dollar, two dollars a day, and then you're going to see five and ten dollar moves. Then all of a sudden, you're going to start seeing fifty and hundred dollar moves. And I'm talking about silver now, I'm not talking about gold. And I think you're going to start seeing two hundred, uh, two hundred dollar day moves in gold. It's a function of shorts being forced to buy because they get a margin call. And I mean, you've got to be suicidal to want to short silver which is the cheapest asset on the planet. In today's news recap, silver short squeeze coming. The Federal Reserve cut interest rates for the first time in over four years in September, sending gold past a record-setting $2,500 an ounce. The aggressive half percentage point reduction was in response to the Fed's significant progress in bringing down inflation, as well as a slowing U.S. economy evoking recession fears. Gold's rally, which started in mid-February, has been underpinned by increased geopolitical risks, the upcoming U.S. election, central bank buying, and slowing ETF sales. It last traded at $2,744 an ounce, up 37% so far in 2024. But silver has done even better. Notching a year-to-date gain of 46%, spot silver is now worth $33.67 as of Monday, 2030, New York time. Last Tuesday, it hit $34, the highest level since 2012. Silver has benefited mostly due to physical buying in India and China. So-called paper silver has also been a factor. In July, two months of outflows reversed to inflows. However, October has been the best month on record for gold 
gold ETFs after silver struck a near 12-year peak on Monday, October. 21, City Research revised its 6- to 12-month forecast for silver prices upward to $40 per ounce from $38 per ounce. UBS Bank is also bullish on silver, with the caveat that the gold-silver ratio rose above 85 to 1 in September after hitting lows of around 73x in May. Despite this, we maintain our view that silver is set to benefit from a rising gold price environment, which is aligned with Fed policy easing, analysts at the bank said. Our expectation that the silver market will remain in deficit over the coming years implies continuous declines in above-ground inventories, which should help fundamentally underpin prices as well as act as a tailwind for investor interest. We see silver outperforming gold over 12 months, with the potential for its ratio to test the long-term average of just below 70x. The unexpected price surge has put five U.S. banks at risk of substantial losses due to their large silver short positions. A short squeeze refers to a situation where an individual or legal entity sells an asset in the future without owning it first in the hope of buying it back later at a lower price to make a profit. However, if the price of this asset increases instead of falling as expected, this individual or legal entity is forced to buy it quickly to honor the delivery of their forward sale. This hasty buying movement then contributes to accentuating the rise in prices. Now we'll show you more clips of the latest interview, but remember to smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. Enjoy the episode. Early month into the fiscal year for the federal government, they're going to pay probably 1.5 or 1.6 trillion in interest only. Uh, we're probably going to run another 2 trillion plus uh, deficit this year. And if interest rates go higher, I mean, we'll be at 2 trillion easily the following year. If you're taking in four and a half trillion in uh, tax revenues and you're paying two trillion out in in interest expense, uh, that, I mean that should answer your question right there. You're you're at a point where uh, interest expense is forty percent of revenue. That's not even. I mean that's completely not sustainable. Uh, and I would suspect that. You would you would see the bricks stepping in and saying that's it we're out we're we are not using dollars here's your dollars, um, and I think what you're what you're going to see is a lot of those dollars are going to come back here to the United States and buy stuff up, and those those dollars that are being sold by foreign uh, foreign central banks foreign sovereign sovereign wealth funds. A lot of that's going to go into gold and silver because they still want to hold money, but they don't want money that's going to debase. So uh, I would just say you're, you know, you're watching, you're watching the unsustainability happen right before your eyes. Really, we've talked about this a thousand times. Your alternative to being in the system is getting your capital out of the system into gold, into silver. Those are monies that cannot bankrupt and in your hand. They can't be bailed. Group that into real estate. And with real estate, you're going to see properties get taxed away from owners in this downturn, just like they, just like happened in the Great Depression. Um, and that sounds nice, uh, productive farmland. The only problem is they're, they don't, if you pay asking price on farmland right now, you're paying. Yeah, well in excess of what the what the uh, production from that property is going to sustain. So that is a a speculative bubble, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. You know, with with farmland. The only thing that I do see wrong with it is the price that you have to pay for it right now. I mean, why would you not? Why would you not own? Gold and silver, which are suppressed and will go through a short squeeze and will revalue much, much higher at the same time that 
uh, real estate uh, prices are going to collapse. It, all real estate is going to collapse in value. It was held up. It was the reason prices are where they are is because credit has been available. Once credit is not available, you're going to see those those uh, property values or prices drop like a stone. I mean, just look at commercial real estate. That's there's your your roadmap to to farmland, to housing, to you name it in the uh, in the real estate sector. I mean, certainly, I think the price of gold and silver are, are going to be revalued higher versus other stuff, and construction supplies are you know other stuff. Uh, the one thing I would say. Is I wouldn't. I personally would not start building right now because I wouldn't want to get. I, I would not want to be in a situation where I'm a quarter built or half built or eighty five percent built, and the system comes down and you're in limbo. You can't do that. I mean, you've got to have your feet on the ground. You get it, and you you need to uh, not have one foot in, one foot out. You need to have both feet on the ground and move to on uh, you know move to wherever your location is um and do that quickly in today's episode bill holter dives deep into why he believes gold and silver are on the verge of an explosive breakout with economic instability rising and central banks printing at record levels he makes a compelling case for precious metals as the ultimate safe haven do you agree with him Post your honest opinion in the comments below. We'd love to hear your take. And if you're looking to understand more about protecting your wealth in these turbulent times, watch this video right here. It's a perfect fit for you. I'll see you on the other side.